We're coming out of Genesis, Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. And I've entitled this sermon, Lord, make me a blessing. Lord, make me a blessing. Shall we stand for the reading of God's word? And after you finish reading it, I will say the word of the Lord and we all together will say thanks be to God. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. The Lord had said to Abram, leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to a land, to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram left as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, and all the possessions they had accumulated, and the people that they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moreh at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he went on to the hills east of Bethel and pitched the tent. With Bethel on the west and I on the east, then he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continued toward the Negev. The word of the Lord. May be seated. I wanted to share three short thoughts with you this morning. And if you have a pen, you might want to write them down. Or if you have a good memory, just jog them in your memory bank. And I want you to refer to them throughout the week. Three short thoughts. First thought is one, God is calling you to separate yourself. God is calling you to separate yourself. Number two, God wants to bless you. Number two, God wants to bless you. And then number three, God wants you to be a blessing. God wants you to be a blessing. Now often when we see this uh, scripture that I've read and we read this text, we look at it from the aspect of faith. And so you would think that this is a message on faith and what true faith is. And this is a bottom line teaching in this text. And so I'll just start from the beginning and say God wants us to have God faith. God wants us to trust Him. God wants us to put everything that we have and invest it in the kingdom of God. God wants us to obey it. That's definitely the text. But I want to look at this text from a different angle, an additional angle this morning. And I want to preach from these three points that I gave you. And the first point is that God is calling you to be separate. Look at what verse 1 says. The Lord said to Abram, leave your country and your people and your father's household and go to the land. I will show you. And so the question begs to be asked, why did God tell Abram to leave the country he lived in? God was calling him out of that country because in that country is the known, the, the, the known country of where it was is approximately of where Iraq is today. And in that country, it was a place where people were not following God. As a matter of fact, they had a plurality of gods that they followed, and people were doing their own things. As a matter of fact, in chapter 11, if you read the text, it talks about the Tower of Babel experience, where people from every area came and they wanted to build this big, beautiful, beautiful building. And the thing that struck me as I was looking at that story was that it said, they said to one another in chapter 11, to 
through his creation and through his Holy Spirit, God has made himself known. But men and women choose to turn their backs on God. And I don't know why they do it, but they do it. And God has to keep reminding them over time that he is still God. Let the church say amen. And so God speaks to Abram, and the word of the Lord says that he told Abram to go. Now God had already been speaking to Abram, and he had already been speaking to people, but he, he decides to call this one man in this one place, and his family, and what does he tell him? Leave your country and your people. God tells him to separate himself from where he is and move to a place where God can have more intimacy with David. And that's what God is telling you and I today. We need to come out of where we are. See, because if we're, if we're doing good where we are, let's look at it this way. We're up here in Tiger, or we're up here in New York, or wherever you're from. You're maybe from the East Coast, the West Coast, and you're just sitting here enjoying life, and everything is going perfect. But you got no problems. Is that the average condition of every human being? Or do you sit in your place and your lot in life with a few problems? If somebody in the house has a few problems, raise your hand. I know I got a bunch of problems. And so God comes to you and I where we sit, and God addresses us where we are, and he says, come out of those problems. Come out of that town. Come out of that situation. I have a word of the Lord from you this morning. And the first thing he tells Abram is, Abram, I don't want you to go get a degree. Abram, I don't want you to go <clears throat> and have a party. Abram, I don't want you to go to the courts and do this and do that. But he says, leave the country from where you are and go to another country. I remember when I was age 15 and I was growing, you know I started growing in New York City in the South Bronx, a real rough part of New York. And my dad and I was just starting to get a little older and I was 15 and just getting ready to start experiencing the world. And had my first girlfriend and thought I was something. And I told Trisha about this story, so she knows by the way. And had my first story, first girlfriend, real girlfriend when I was 15. And the thing that I was thought was so cool was that he always college out 
life of celebration of our family, and so I respected him highly. Plus, he was the worship leader in our church, and so I looked up to him, and I loved him. And so Henry said, David, I understand that you dated a young lady that you're 15, that she's 18, and I came down, and they told me about it, and you're going to break off that relationship with that girl. And I said, no, I'm not. And Henry looked at me and said, you're going to break off that relationship with that girl. And he says, I've seen what drugs, I've seen what a loose living has done in the ghettos of New York, and that's why we sing, and that's why we leave the choir, because we leave people out of that lifestyle, and I'm not going to have my younger brother get caught up into it, and I'm going to take you out first before I let the world do it.